I read a science fiction story once which was talking about the, the social impact of teleportation, the ability to be able to move physically instantly from one place to another. And it focused around the creation of what the author called flash crowds. Something would happen and all of a sudden 100,000 people would appear there. Social networks do the same thing except not physically. You can't all necessarily physically be there. But I mean, if for example you need help on something and you're using an electronic social network, you can get 50 people helping you in the way you want. In other words, they could be um, a crowd that appears because there's something fun going on. You know, you know look, look at this YouTube video. It could be, I need help with this, with this particular piece of code. Um, in other words, it is a functional group without a structure because it's, once it's accomplished its objective, whatever that happens to right. be, it, it then disappears. It, just, right. it goes away again. That's beautiful. You said that you... He just said... In much shorter words, what I believe social media is value in. And I really believe this very much as a Gen Xer, that Gen Xers typically don't align behind institutions. They do a lot of functional groups for a purpose, whether it's three minutes or three years, and then they disband. And they don't need to keep the structure going. So, part of my beliefs is all. Yeah, you know, a kind of you know, real world business example of this is a Hollywood studio. You know, it exists yeah. okay, good, good, for as long as it takes uh, we're, uh, to make the movie, about social media and all the yeah. parts disappear right. and reform, coalesce right. on, on another project. Great, great example. Of form. Of form. Well, well, you know, I, I've been following a number of, of groups like Burning Man, and uh -huh. even though I haven't been out there, but I've filmed uh, uh, some of the people there are involved in. And, and there's a lot of... of this um, social movement going on that that is quite interesting in the sense of they're they're like a movement, but a, but more than just the movement, they're a, a way of thinking. Rather, rather self responsibility. Right, and, and I see one of the reasons why I was asking about organizations and stuff like it because I, I I believe that it's uh, we really need to look at the individual. Because organizations aren't really interested in the individual. They're interested in their own per per perceptions and their own uh, reproduction and their own uh, very, propagation. Very well said. Yeah. And, 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 and so if we're going to change, make the world a more creative and more peaceful and more harmonious place, then it has to be the individuals. So one of my documentaries, of which Jeff is a suspect, and it's called My Own Private Revolution, about people who are challenging the status quo, who are challenging their imagination, who are challenging our imagination to, to think and, and, and make a difference. And I, I think if we look at social media as individuals trying to make a difference on an individual basis, how much more powerful that is, the voice of one person who stands up to society or up to the, the status quo and tries to just make a little difference, change. And, and, yet, and yet because it's social media, it's not one individual fighting the institution mm -hmm. as in my power versus your power. It's basically just, this is where I'm going. Right, right. And then, we, like you said, you can fu you, the, the functional connections that, that form and then disband. And the beauty is that social media is often very connected to institutional things. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I write about and blog about is linking to an article in traditional media or pointing to an event that's structured and organized by my community or an institution in the form of an establishment or a business or something. So it's it's not like I'm separate from society or disconnected, it's that I'm carving my own path for how I'm going to move through it, and I'm empowered more through my individual connections with others, but I'm still using, I'm assembling and using the various pieces of society. I'm not fighting them, I'm just picking and choosing the ones that support the direction that I'm going in. Well, one of the things I think about <laughs> is about the butterfly syndrome. Mm -hmm. A butterfly flaps its wings and it can not only 
change the direction of a storm, it can create a storm. And that creating the storm is the thought behind the individual. Yeah. The, the part, what? It can tip a storm. Right. Yeah. It creates it. It can tip it. it can, but, 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 but if we look at that from an individual basis, so your thoughts just, in, you know, and you're flapping your wings, your imaginary wings. Uh, what I call it's the difference that makes a difference. The difference that makes a difference. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and she's actually I'm just rubbing her wings. wings. <laughs> I knew there was something uh, strange about this butterfly. But you know, one of the things that's going to happen is that you'll get this group coalescing instantly, and then most of the group moves on, but some people stay. You know, so there isn't a division between you know traditional structure and this, because in fact this can evolve into that. Some people decide, you know, of the 50 people working on this, there's four of us who really see eye to eye. Let's actually work together for my company. Well, you know, the interesting thing is that we do that in many ways in business by going into a store that that maybe has, like we're here in the diner. Diner was a film, you know, made a number of people wealthy, well-known, made, planted some dreams, and uh, but I think we, we, you know, you, what did it take to bring that together? All these little pieces of individuals working, at, you know, somebody working out in the field, planting, um, feeding the chicken, you know, harvesting a dream. I was just telling Jesse that this morning as I've been watching this eight-part miniseries on John Adams. And when you listen to the founding of this country through his lens, it's a very different story than the one I heard for my own educational purposes. And it's like, what it took to actually found this nation was not like linearness, you know, this happened and this happened and this happened, or everybody just got up and they were all aligned and they decided this is where we were going. You know, it wasn't that way at all. You know, it was a very small snippet of time when everybody was all together trying to decide they wanted to do that. And then the other time it was everybody was doing a little here, a little here, a little here, a little here, that nobody could have orchestrated. It was just the people doing what they needed to do, how they needed to do it, with the people they needed to do it with. It could be a trip that was a, a terrible mistake, but in fact, you know, we could still have a monarchy here. We had to suffer in this Republican form of government. So, but, but if you, if you listen... I'm British. Uh -huh. uh, you're forgiven. Uh, I'm from New York. Um, <laughs> well, that's, that's like having no country at all. No, I live on the... Hey, hey, I live on... I, I married a New Yorker. And, uh, hey, hey, let, you ask her, uh, hey, you know, you, what, what yeah. nationality are you? She says Brooklyn. I mean, it's... <laughs> well, you know, I live on the island of denial. Yeah. 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 It's an island that's for itself. But, but you know, I, I, that series is very good. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Have you read the book? No, my mother was reading the book. She was having a hard time with it. So I'll watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's great true to the book. But, but one thing to think about and I, in this social media, if we go back and look at the founding fathers, what, uh, I'm sorry, sexist fathers. You see the program, it's very clearly founding mothers too. <laughs> no, I, I, well, we know that. I, yeah. But the, the interesting thing is, if you look at Thomas Jefferson's writings after he was president, Presidents, and, and uh, even to his death, he was he predicted where we are today. Because he understood that we really had to have a. He was more interested in a free press than a, than a strong government. He was more interested. He said we need we, we need to uh, to rethink and reinvent ourselves. And he was he was he was careful. He said you know we have to really pay attention. I, I have on one of my websites I have uh, quotes from Thomas Jefferson which are quite interesting along with quotes by Henry Miller. Henry Miller. Henry Miller. Oh, Henry Miller. Well, I find fascinating Barry that Miller. I did that just kind of clicked into place to me is that there's this real juxtaposition between Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. Right. They were together in this but on polarized sides of the equation that they were fascinated with each other. So on one side you have, yes, absolute freedom of the press and people doing what they need to do saying what they need to say and then John Adams comes back and says you got to be careful. I mean, if, if, if we get 
get what we want, we're going to be self-governing, and oh my God, what are we going to get when we're self-governing? So that there's this, there's both, both of these polarizations at the same time that have to have to happen because if we're not careful, we'll get what we deserve. But but but, but think about this: we've been in this, we've been in the same war, the same violence, the same propaganda, the same fear since the be before the beginning of recorded time, before forever. We've been still in this same soap opera, the same revolving door, having the same wars every 20 years. Every 80 years, yeah. there's the same war. Well, no, no. no. There, 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 yeah, but, but, but the type of wars switch. Well, yeah, so that's a whole other subject. Yeah. But, 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 I mean, but if you look at society itself, but the question we don't ask is who benefits from all these wars? How, you know, when you have... 98% of the population who don't, or 99, except for a few people, and the war really, to me, I've been thinking more about is the power of fear and the fear of power, and that the people who benefit from war are the people who are in power, who want to stay in power, because people are afraid of not belonging. The revolution would flip that on its head, is it? and that's part of what it said, is that people, they believed in rights, the right of liberty and justice, you know, is what they're fighting for, and human rights not just for a nation. And they knew they didn't want to fight, but they knew that it was going to come down to it. They were going to have to fight for those rights. So the war wasn't about staying in power. It was about taking power away from somebody else. Right, but but who was in power? The Founding Fathers. They were wealthy people, weren't they? Didn't they have money? You know. Weren't they? Like, <laughs> yeah, but don't give me. Were they in the war in Iraq? Who benefits from that? Everybody who drives an automobile in the United States that relies on cheap Gas. Yeah, but we don't get gas from there because they can't get it out. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> but no, but I'm just saying is we need it. more complex than that. So who benefits from that is that Saddam Hussein's not in power anymore. We all benefit from that. I don't know about that. Okay. Yeah, but maybe that. he he kept the balance uh, uh, in did. that. In that. Well, see, this is the challenge is because why is there a Saddam Hussein out there? Is because the Iraqi people are who they are. And that's the kind of leadership that they yeah, need but, but, to, keep but, them, to keep them together. But that kind of leadership is not acceptable on the world stage. Well, are they any different than us? And uh, uh, have, have we ever had leaders? You know, well, George Bush said, um, uh, "I don't have to answer to anybody. I, I'm the president of the United States." You know, he doesn't. He doesn't have to answer. The leaders of the world have always felt that they were independent. What? You're not a Republican, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm neither. I'm. I'm ne I, I don't. I. I don't believe in our. I think we need to reinvent ourselves. Well, I think technology gives you the opportunity to reinvent your society with every major change. But, but it's the people who use the technology, in, not the technology itself. In, in 1900, 50% of the American population worked on farms. It's now 2%. A change like that, 48% of the population going from a rural environment to an industrial environment is a massive change. And it was driven by technology. Right, but think about where we are now. Uh, we're, 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 uh, the price of, of, I went into my pizza place uh, two weeks ago, and he jumped from $2.25 to $2.75. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I said. And I asked him why. He said because the price of wheat had gone sky high. And the reason the price of wheat had gone sky high because of our selling wheat overseas. And using it to create ethanol. Under. That's corn. That's corn. You don't use wheat for that? No, 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 no. Even though you could, but uh, corn is better. Uh, wheat ferments always, always. So you're looking at a, a rising standard of living around the world, with nations right, right. like China importing wheat that didn't use it. Right, right, right. But the interesting thing in, in terms we of that, a bit more. The, the wheat that we normally export as... Um, you know, for underdeveloped countries, mm -hmm. is a hybrid. You know, it's for grain. Yeah. It's for for flour. Is a hybrid that they can't plant. They're nasty like that. Okay. No, they can't plant it, so they can't be independent. So they'll be dependent. No, no, there's a point in that. So you give them all this stuff, but they need you next time. You give them grain that they can that they can plant. They're free. Conspiracy. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Is that, I'm just saying that there's always something else going on. She's a mischievous one. We have to watch her. That's why. She, that's why her name is Jesse Newborn.
New Bern. New Bern, I think. Ed Edison. What the hell? New Bern. New Bern. New Bern. New Bern. New Bern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Scottish name. Uh, That's him. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I have a Scottish name. A Scottish name? Yeah. Hey, what does he know? And I should tell him. I'm Scottish. Yeah, that is wild. Now, do you drink milk in your, in your tea? Yes. Except when it's not available, in which case I drink it. <laughs> I'm flexible like that. But, uh, so, uh, uh, the question I have about new media, new, the social media, to go back to that since I'm running out. I have to get the other one. Um, like, you got a big heart in there, don't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> is, is it strong enough to stand on its own as a, a, a model for a social no. change? No. Because it's not about the technology. It's about the thinking and the mindsets and the value systems under the people that are actually using that technology. So it's not... It's, it's, it's the bigger. people. So that we're, we're still kind of trapped in our uh, running with our it, shoes it, together. It, yeah. Do you, and your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, I agree with the thinking that, that things alone don't change. I mean, the access to stuff doesn't, doesn't make things different. It's how people use and apply them. So my sense is that it's a kind of a chicken and the egg thing with the social media in the sense that the people who are attracted to the social media are the people who are thinking in a way that's different. So it has more power because, I mean, the, the people who find an, an attraction to and use and are willing to overcome the hurdles of the, the, uh, the discomfort of being transparent and... Are you trying to catch my boobs? Hey, 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 well, hey, 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 this is, uh, we have... <laughs> uh, no comment at all. I am not going there. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not old enough to go there. <laughs> Never have been. <laughs> Um, so, so, I, so I believe that I believe that the technology, the social media technologies that are available, have a certain resonance and attraction to a certain type of people that think in a certain way that are leading and exploring and, and at the edges of it. Because social media can be very uncomfortable. I mean, it can be really uncomfortable to be so transparent and to be so out there, and that that is not for everyone. At least not at this point. It's not mainstream enough yet that everyone feels comfortable to be in it. So the people who are in it are <laughs> bringing that new thinking that Sherry spoke with, that is making it more powerful and more effective for a movement and for transformation and so, all that kind of stuff. So, I, was just, uh, I was just listening to um, a lecture that somebody who works at Google was talking about. And Google's kind of leading in terms of organizing people and using social media. I mean, they're leading the path on that. And one of the things they said is everything Thing in that company is put on their internet. They record and they document everything. And part of the challenges they have now in managing people is that when somebody comes and they ask a question or they want to know something, is that the management or anybody they're asking has to turn around and say, did you look on the internet? Ah, well, if you didn't, you better go. Well, if you did, then you better figure out how to find it on the internet. Because it's like we're not going to reduplicate and keep talking to each other using this kind when it's all out there. So get all the information that you need because it's out and available and then figure out what you're going to do. And so that to me is just like this huge, that in itself is a huge shift about getting people to use technology. So Sherry and I, one of the ways that we became, so, the way that we became social media queens, and we are social media queens, is we decided to have a party two years ago. And what we did was, we said, let's figure out how to blog. Let's tell people who's going to be at the party. This was two years ago, right? So this was kind of cutting edge back then. And we're, we we're these kind of early 40s women you know, sitting at her kitchen table being able to go like, what are we going to do? So we had a party. We sent out a beautiful, stunning print invitation. But we didn't include all the information on the invitation intentionally because it said in order to get the rest of the information, you actually will have to go online. So what we were saying to our people in our network was we want to be online. We want to be using social media. And we want to be out there. We want to be broadcasting who we are and what we're doing so that you can know us better. And if you 
want to come to this party rather than just showing up at this party in the middle of the suburbs, you'll actually have a sense of who's already there because we'll be blogging about it and linking to people's websites and you know people making comments and all that kind of stuff. So the way that we became these social media queens today, two years later, we have tons of blogs and all and tons of parties, is by doing a hybrid of like connecting with people face to face, but then asking them to come online. One of the things that we do is we have these parties called American City Girls parties, and people come. And we're very clear. We do the same. We do the same theory, the same system. Hi, here's this gorgeous print invitation with a handwritten note and a hand addressed envelope. But in order to get the actual information for the party, you have to go to our website. <laughs> and our website is replete. I mean, it says all kinds of information about us. And what is the website? AmericanCityGirls.com is one of them. And then there's Living-Locally.us. I mean, we have different ways. For different depending on what event we're having, we send them to different URLs, and that's how they come in. We have different. <laughs> One store, many storefronts. So, um, so anyway, people come to our parties all the time, and they're when they're fussy and when they are aggressive and they don't like social media, they'll go like, "So, what are these parties about?" <laughs> and one of the things that Sherry and I have kind of had to hold to is saying to be able to be really bright and not get caught up in their question, but to actually turn to them and go, "You'll find all kinds of information on our website. I'm sure if you just spend a little time and click." around, you'll learn all kinds of things, you know, and to be, and to hold a line with people, which is to say, we've already put the energy Thanks. into Thanks. communicating. You if you're curious, put some time into learning. Don't make me say it again. And, and it's for a good reason. It's not just because we're principle-based. I honestly believe is that those people that know how to give and receive information on the internet are the ones that are going to thrive in the future. I mean, it is, it's like being, it's like the global brain, you know, that's kind of an overused term, but it actually is forming. And in order for us to actually do and know what we need to be doing and where we need to be going, we're going to have to, like, get your information that comes across the Internet. It just... So, so I formed on Facebook a uh, Facebook Nation. Aww. They're the idea, of, uh, again, about the uh, flapping of butterfly wings, you know, so that uh, maybe we, we as an Internet community without any boundaries or borders can make a difference. Uh, it's just the activity, the next step, you know, so I form that. And I'm watching what other people are doing and they're not doing anything. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and I, you know, try and plant little things and... We'll see, we'll see. Um, it's just uh, uh, an experiment. I have about a hundred websites also. Oh, really? Though. Yeah. Are they connected and people like... No, not really. Not, that's what we're working on is trying to get yeah. them all connected. No.